Welcome, welcome to FC Cymru and welcome to the warm and cosy surroundings of Llandrindod Wells Football Club. More about the club later on, but today is a special occasion because you don't know it, but I'm wearing lycra and that means I'm making my FC Cymru debut actually doing football, walking football to be precise, and it's not as easy as you might believe. More on that later on in the programme and you've seen what's coming up, let's crack on with it. Cue the graphic. This is Grant, which kind of makes me wonder whether his parents ever told him it was pronounced Geraint. But we're not here to discuss moniker etymology, we're here to discuss your club. Tell me about your club. Our club is a fantastic club, it's got a lot of history, it dates back to 1883. Um, and we currently play in the Midwells League and we're very, very proud. Well, I'm very, very proud to be chairman of this club. And this is a club that, you think you get it straight away, this is a club that's rooted in more than just a team. There's, there's a whole community going on here. Yes, it's not just a football club. We've, we've, everyone's proud of how we've come along through these years um, and it does reach out to the whole community. It's not just about football. We are going to try walking football as well you already do it i've never done it before yeah. so that's what i'm looking for so um i'm just coming back from an ankle injury so what just a gentle stroll of an evening is that what i've got yeah you're not allowed to run which is it suits me down to the ground because you're not allowed to run um a ball above a head height isn't allowed no pushing no hard tackling and it's quite a gentle uh sport um, for anyone We've got people who have never thought they've been good enough to play football. We've got retired people that have played football. We've got people that uh, are sort of secluded in their own homes and it's a good social event for them. So it's not just about football and fitness, it's actually bringing people into a bit of a, a, a close friendship with uh, other players. Yeah, so it's back to, back to community again then? Absolutely, yeah. It's all about community and we don't turn anyone away regardless of their ability. It ticks all the boxes and it's, it's a great way to socialise. Well that sounds amazing Grunt, what a fantastic club that you've got here. I'm looking forward to a bit of walking football, I'm going to finish my pre-match tea first. In the meantime, you guys are off to Newtown. It was the final of the Nathaniel MG Cup, the first silverware up for grabs this season. From the Cymru Premier it was Connors Key Nomads versus the Minnows STM Sports from Cymru South. Dan Jardine was sent to watch. Hello and welcome to Newtown for the 2020 Nathaniel MG Cup final and what a final we've got for you. It's David versus Goliath. It's Connors Key Nomads of the upper echelons of the JD Cymru Premier against STM Sports who are currently serving their first season in the JD Cymru South. What a crack and David versus Goliath. I can't wait for it to start. Let's go chat to some of the fans, see how their nerves are holding up. You're a massive, massive uh, Nomads fan. Are you looking forward to tonight? Absolutely. Um, we've lost the semi-final of this competition the last four seasons. So uh, when we beat Ballon in the semi-final this year, you know, fifth time lucky. It was finally, you know, good, you know, great to get to the League Cup final. A lot of characters as well in that in that Nomads team. How much of a lift do you think those players, Andy Morrison, could give these players out here? You know, you can hear what you know what he's like on the touchlines. He's very vocal, and uh, you know, you've got leaders in there like George Duran. You've got people like Danny Holmes who are very loud and. You know, there's, um, there's some good characters out there, and Callum Morris in the midfield. He's, you know, he might not be very vocal, but he's like an engine, very underrated player as well. And uh, hopefully, you know, we can do the job. What does it mean for like, uh, an STM fan? Obviously, first season in the Cymru South, you made yourself to a cup final. They, they, they've done well. They've beaten teams in this league. You know, up in Aberystwyth, Newtown, they've beat them out. They got anything to lose. You know, they're in the game all the way. Right, who's going to win tonight then, boys? No, no. Oh, no. Five nil. Five nil. Five. Five. <laughs> boys are confident there, yeah.
disappointing here today, but you've got to take the positives coming here and reaching the final, surely. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, the result's not what we were hoping for, but, um, you know, the players gave it everything and, you know, it's been a, an amazing journey for all of us um, and I couldn't be more proud of the players today. There's a lot of people who couldn't make it and I know we've got a lot of support back home and a lot of people who are watching it on TV, you know. Um, I'm hoping you know, that, that, that kind of support will continue and um, we'll see more of them um, as the season goes on. So Andy, first final since 1996 and you've managed to win it. How does it feel? Fantastic. Um, you know, it's been a... It's been a great journey. Um, you know, we've played really well. Um, I don't think we conceded a goal in the, in the competition. Um, and we go to the Iron Broom next year, which is huge for us. You join us in the salubrious surroundings of just outside the changing room, where I have Nigel and I've got Brian, fresh from uh, battle. Uh, Nigel, walking football. Take me through it then. What's, uh, what got you into it? I've always loved football. And this just gives me the opportunity to come back and do something I've always enjoyed doing, with the legs going downhill fast. I, I, I feel you. is just right for me. Yeah, it really is. Brian, how about you? Yeah, pretty much the same for me. Me and Nigel used to play against each other. I've even played with him a couple of times. So it's just the way. I, like, I haven't played proper football for over 25 years. But I, same as Nigel, love football ever since I was a kid. So basically, you're still 12, aren't you? That's basically it. It takes you back to your childhood. It takes you straight back to your childhood, and if it's something you can do and get some enjoyment out of, keep doing it. You don't realise how it gets you into that sort of momentum of playing football again. And the sweat starts dripping, and you think, where did that come from? Nice. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Too ambitious. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the keeper. Basically there's a club that's built on tradition and bringing local people the community into what really is something for everybody and where we can actually you know, sort of get people involved in sports and obviously helping run a club and keep it going so it's a legacy for the future. Yeah, And I get the feeling the only community comes up there as well, you know, the people that get involved, they make the club then so as many people as you can get the better. Yeah, I think so and it doesn't matter what level you're at I don't think because it's a slower pace and that competitive edge is not quite there, it's, it's a bit more laid back. Speaking most of which, of the time. most of the time I was about to say. Uh, still to all to play for here, but uh, Wales women, they've got it all to play for as well. They've got really important games coming up in North and South Wales. Now what really pleases us about the team and what makes them so special is that they are beyond uh, football really, they're beyond players, they're role models and they really do buy into that. So we went along to a Welsh school to find out what it's like when a Wales legend turns up. I'm Jack and I'm 10 years old. My name's Ira, I'm nine years old. And I'm Zach, and I'm nine years old. My name's Sam, and I'm nine years, uh, ten years old. Sure? Sure. <laughs> ten? Birthday in December. That's so. fine, that's fine. Oh, so he's only just ten? Yeah, so so I'm, getting, I'm getting, getting used to it. it. Oh, okay, fair enough, fair enough, <laughs> yeah. that's good, that's good. Jack, what's it like when you have somebody coming into the school? It's just really exciting because, well, you get to ask them questions and find out stuff about the famous people. Well, my sister plays a lot of football and she told me a lot about her because, well, Jess Rickshaw is her inspiration really and she told me a lot about it, like that she got 100 caps and everything. Sounds to me a little bit like your sister's going to be really jealous of you today. Is that, is that true? <laughs> yeah, probably really <laughs> jealous, yeah. All of you guys had so many questions, didn't you? Most of our school is more football based because some of the girls as well play football. So we were all excited uh, when we heard she was coming in. And me, me and Zach only knew until Mr Burgess said when we were going into assembly. So we were buzzing about it. So Because it's not often you get a Welsh international coming into your no. school, is it? When me, Sam and Ira and Jack got represented to get the t-shirt, 
We all felt like really happy because it was just fish luck and we get to keep it in our trophy frame and then that'll be another thing to add to the trophy frame. We want to make sure that the future is is there and that the young girls can see kind of, and boys as well, can see the future of, of, of being in Wales. It's still very big, you know, we often get overlooked because we're such a small, tiny little country, but, you know, we have so much opportunity and it's important that the kids can see that. They're going to ask you some strange questions, aren't they? Are you ready for this? Yeah, <laughs> I know, it's really weird what they come out with. How much do you get paid in <laughs> There are two questions in your life you should never ask a lady. One, how old she is, and two, how much she earns. <laughs> we asked her a question if she was on like FIFA, and then uh, one of our friends, Archie, who's also football mad, was like, we need to find out if she's on FIFA, <laughs> like on the FIFA women's team. One of my best games I've played in, we played against Russia. 2018, and we won 3-0. I think we played the best game we've ever played. I don't think I've ever felt like that ever in my life. And she was the first ever Welsh footballer to reach 100 caps. Did you know that? Welsh? Yeah. yeah she was the first yeah. ever Welsh footballer to reach 100 caps. Women and men. Women and men. More than Ryan Giggs. More than Ryan that. Giggs. More than Gareth Bale. Really? More than Chris Gunter, who is really? the most capped Welsh men's international. <sighs> okay, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't, didn't know that. that. It was quite different for you. At primary school, right? I think you were telling me there wasn't even a team you could join in. No, I couldn't play football when I was in primary school or in high school. I couldn't play any of the sports that I wanted to play. And so it's important that we try and change that narrative. Space Raiders. Anybody here like Space Raiders? Yeah. If you had to improve anything, what would it be? From a football perspective? Or just like... Me, no joking. <laughs> They'll never know that they enjoy something if they don't have the opportunity to do it or to play it or to try it. So not only do they have the the chance to play sports or to do arts or, or, or music, you know, it doesn't have to be sports, but they have the opportunity and then they can see also what that opportunity can lead to. And I think that that's arguably probably one of the most powerful things for a kid. Are you guys going to come and watch Wales women play against the Faroe Islands in April? If you have enough money, <laughs> right? Okay. Yes, probably with my sister. Are you um, going to come? I want to go to watch Wales Spain, so probably. Yeah, excellent stuff. And you? Um. Excellent, Zach. Zach's going to come. Brilliant. Well done, Zach. Do you know what? It's enough talk of legacy. You've got action to do. Mm -hmm. You've got to go talk to them in there. Are you ready? Are you ready, Jess? Be, ready. be strong. Be strong, Jess. Fresh from battle, fresh from the field of dreams. I know, hard. Jane, <laughs> how was that? Really good. I haven't been in for a couple of weeks because so I had this flu bug, but yeah, it's great to come back to it again. You know, feeling it a little bit now? Mm, yes, a bit. A yeah. couple of aches and pains. Yeah. <laughs> See, what's more remarkable here is that Jane doesn't even like football. Or at least you didn't. You know, I've got used to it now. I'm getting to even watch football matches, what's quite amazing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, you're actually, oh, what, you're, you're uh, part of the uh, Clandrin Dot Ultras then, yeah, on the side. Yeah, must be, must be. <laughs> Since I've started this, I might not look it, but I have lost half a stone, and it's really good, and it gets you motivated to realise you can do these things. You know, when I came here, everybody said, oh, Jane, really, you're going to do that? But yeah, been absolutely brilliant. And you, you're all the same, everybody looks after you, and it's a bit of fun, a bit of barter. Though, coming on to week six now, they're getting a bit more sort of competitive. I got that, yeah. I got that feeling, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Was, I noticed that one or two very quick steps were being yes, taken. Yes, yeah. I noticed. Mm. And then it's high ball on some and not on others. I noticed that too. So. Yeah, yeah. Now, you got involved through Tesco then. You work at Tesco yeah, and I Tesco is a, is a community partner. Yeah, so I work with Tesco's. I do all the community fundraising that. Uh, diabetes is one of my main ones this year. So um, I asked if they would come on board with me to help with diabetes, uh, some of the fundraising I'm doing, and this is how we all sort of got together and started to do it. Then in a few weeks' time in Landor Tesco's car park, we're doing a Sunday all day walking football to get people interested. OK, all right, so this is just a little a prelude, a preview to yeah, it all then. Yeah, yeah, that's why I had to sort of try and look like I knew what I was doing. 
I do a lot of local community projects, but I also do three national charities. But most of my money stays local, so a lot of this will help people who are here, different things and different associations. This year raised 64,000. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's, that's amazing yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well done, nice, yes! Well, you and I are due back out on pitch, actually, so we better limber up. But, yeah, we better get going. Uh, lovely to chat, Thank and uh, see you out there in a bit. Thank okay, you. right. That's uh, Jane Griffiths there. Thank you very much to Jane. Now, the UK Cure Parkinson's Cup is coming up. It's taking place in April, and it's been organised by a Welshman. Now, he's trying to put a team together to take part. So we went along to talk to him, to find out about Parkinson's, and what a benefit football can have on people living with that condition. I'm Garen Williams, uh, I'm 48 years old and I've been living with Parkinson's disease for the last three years. Living with Parkinson's is, is difficult. I suffer with slowness of movement, rigidity, uh, anxiety and a little bit of depression. I went to see a neurologist. When he said those words to me, you have Parkinson's, at that moment in time I thought to myself, how can I have Parkinson's disease? It's an older person's disease and I'm only 46. I thought my world had stopped because I'm very, very fit, I'm active and I enjoy life and being unable to play sport, I thought my life would be over. It's been clinically proven that two and a half hours of vigorous exercise per week helps slow down the progression of Parkinson's. My way of coping with this is to play football because I get that activity, exercise, the achievement and the euphoria of, of winning. When I play football, I forget about my Parkinson's. I spend most of the day thinking about it. It's very, very difficult to get away from it. But sport and exercise helps me focus and just, just live for the moment. First of all, I, I read a little bit on Facebook that they were looking for players with Parkinson's disease to play an international football competition in Copenhagen. First of all, I thought it was a little bit of a, a bit of a wind-up, but I went along to one of my boxing classes and a fellow member there said that he was part of this team. Next thing I know, I was part of the international UK Young Onset Parkinson's football team. We entered the competition, the Ray Kennedy Cup in Copenhagen. We won all our games in our group stages and we narrowly lost out in the semi-final. What we've done is we've uh, created a team of other people with Parkinson's with the idea to play in the Cure Parkinson's Cup, which is in Worcester on the 19th of April. People with Parkinson's suffer with anxiety and they tend to shut themselves away and um, are very sort of worried with putting themselves into situations that they can't cope with. So it's a safe environment. People feel comfortable. People feel welcome. You can talk to uh, other sufferers. You know, we help each other, we support each other, which I think is what the community spirit should be. Being supported by the Football Association of Wales is just a dream come true. I never thought at 46 years of age I would be able to represent my country um, in a Parkinson's uh, international football competition. They are providing a football kit for the whole team to play in. With help and support, we're able to, to play football. See, they think that I think that walking football is quite easy, but I know it's not. I know actually it's really quite hard, so. But I've learned a couple of things, so basically, if the ref doesn't see it, it never happened.
Well, that was a lovely evening of walking football and <laughs> to not be fooled by the term walking. It's pretty intense stuff at times, but uh, really, really worth getting involved with. Um, a huge thank you to everyone at Thunder and Dud Wells for hosting us this evening. Fabulous club, really embedded in the community. That's what we love right here on FC Cymru. Uh, this wraps up this uh, edition of the programme. If you want to reach out and touch us, then details across the bottom of the screen right now. But from me in Thunder and Dud Wells, take care.